Hey everybody, Kathy McLeish, alcoholic in recovery. Um, talking about alcoholism before you stop drinking, after you stop drinking, and everything in and around that. So I want to talk about fear and change, and maybe even fear of change, because it is a huge part of the alcoholic staying in the problem and not moving into the solution. And then believe it or not, if you move into the solution, it is a huge part of the recovering person to stay in good when there is better and best ahead of them. Because change at every level is a little bit scary. It's a little bit different. And what I've learned, and let's just talk about what I've learned, because I just don't get on here and try and blow smoke. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything thing that hasn't worked for me. And I have been in recovery for 38 years. I got sober when I was 27. And so I have worked with people. I have had people work with me that whole time. I have opened myself up to other people's ideas, their experience, their strength, their wisdom. And I have learned mostly by my own mistakes over and over again, and then finally conceding to a better uh, way, a better uh, idea. So I have learned over that amount of time kind of a little bit about how alcoholics think, how we go at life, how we manage our fears and our emotions, and not just when we're drinking. I'm talking about alcoholics in recovery as well. And so if we are on the side of still practicing our addiction, if we think alcohol might be a problem, or if somebody that you love love has a problem with alcohol and you think that they need to find a new way to live without alcohol, then there is some things going on that i just like to talk about. And one being fear. And for the most part, as an alcoholic, I would have told you I am not afraid of anything. And I pretty much lived a life that said she is not afraid of anything. Now, it didn't say that I was sensible and responsible and that I, you know, was making good choices. There was nothing like that going on. But it did say that I didn't have a lot of fear. Now, when it came to changing my life, when I knew I had to do something different, I was very fearful. And the biggest part of that fear was fear of the unknown. Fear of what is ahead if I do this thing so differently. And that nobody could answer that. They could say, this is what happened to me. They could say, I think this is what is gonna happen to you. But they really couldn't tell me what was ahead. Was my marriage gonna stay the same? Was my marriage gonna improve? Was my family gonna fall apart? Was I gonna lose my job? Was I gonna get a better job? Was I gonna like myself? Was I gonna be even more afraid to get out of bed in the morning? What was gonna happen if I did something different? And in that part of my life, and still today at different levels, I assume the worst. I look at something in front of me, I know there has to be a change. I know that I need to do something different, try something different. And immediately I go to, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if I'm wrong? What if I do it wrong? And instead of looking at it like an opportunity for something good to come into my life and something that isn't working to leave, find its way out, I look at it like something bad could happen, so I don't want to change. The problem with alcoholism, when I'm a practicing alcoholic, is I get so comfortable with pain that I can stay in my pain and I can be okay. And am I really okay? No. And the people around me are not okay either. But I have gotten so comfortable with this level of enduring pain getting out of bed in the morning and thinking everything is going to go wrong or I'm not going to be able to do the things that I want to do or I'm going to fail again at stopping drinking or fulfilling that promise for my wife, my husband, my children. I have that attitude and I get comfortable with it. So when it is time to change, you know, as an alcoholic, I'm thinking, you know, I know this pain. I know this pain. I've come to accept this pain and I know how to live with it. So that out there, that pain of change, even if it is better, I don't know it and it's uncomfortable. So it's very hard to make the leap. So the idea that I am trying to express today is that that stagnant place in my life as a drinking alcoholic, as a person married to an alcoholic that is afraid to make any change, 
that is getting me nowhere. In fact, as an alcoholic, as a person living with an alcoholic, we can pretty much attest to it does not get better on its own. It only gets worse. And even if we put down that drink and try to do recovery on our own, it usually doesn't get a lot better for a long period of time. Because drinking is a symptom of whatever is going on underneath. And that too can sound so scary, but it doesn't have to be scary. If I can get to the problem underneath this problem, then it's a victory, it's a victory. And I am on the other side with my solution. So looking at this fear that is keeping me in one place and identifying it as unrealistic. There's no real basis for this fear. If, if I move in a different direction, I'm only moving out of pain into something better. I'm only moving out of failure, out of this feeling of being overwhelmed with the ugliness of my life, with the stagnation, with the relationships that are getting worse instead of better, with my inability to get up and show up and do the things that I wanna do to be able to look at myself in the mirror and feel good about myself. That's where I'm stuck. So wouldn't it make sense that anything that I do to move from there is gonna be better than where I'm at? The fear that I have isn't valid. The courage that I need, I borrow from other people. I borrow from people, that's what I did. I borrowed from people that could look at me and say, my life is better because I did this. Maybe if you do this, your life will be better. And that, you know, is me today. I'm here to say that when I took that step of faith, that leap of looking at somebody else and saying, maybe if it worked for them, it could work for me. When I took that step and walked through that fear, my life began to change for the better. My life began to change so much for the better. And it continued to change because as I stayed away from a drink, and as I brought new ways of thinking and doing things into my life, I was able to show up. I was able to keep promises. I was able to be honest. I was able to look at myself and say, this isn't working and I think I want to change it. Can you help me? Can you tell me how you changed that area of your life? How you became a better mother? How you became a stronger worker? How you became a better partner in a marriage relationship? So I learned a bit at a time, over a period of time. But during that time, which seems like, oh my gosh, it's gonna take forever. It's like, you're gonna go through, I was gonna go through those next years no matter what. So unless I died from my alcoholism, which was a, a big possibility. So I was gonna go through that time no matter what. So why not go through it, changing for the better? walking through those fears to get on the other side, which does not take very long before the denial lifts, that dark cloud lifts, and I'm able to see the truth. And when you get in a group of people that are doing that, you hear those different levels. You know, I came in and I was new. I was in my first week and there was somebody that had 30 days. I remember her, I had gone to school with her and she had 30 days and I was like thinking, oh my gosh, she did it. She's got 30 days. Well, today I may not think 30 days is she's arrived, but 30 days at that time was amazing. And I could see when I looked at her and when she said, you've got to try it. It is a different way and it's a better way. I could see the possibility for my life. And then there was the person with six months and I couldn't go much further than that because it didn't seem real to me. But instantly in that room, I could see people doing things. I could hear people trying things and they were possibilities for my life. And I could mirror or I could imitate what they were doing and try to change. And the fear, became a gift instead of this burden, instead of it being this scary thing that I was plagued with. It became a motivator. Fear began to motivate me that if I don't change this, I'm gonna go backwards. If I don't change this, I'm not gonna be fully happy. If I don't try this new way, I'm gonna be sober and I'm still gonna have all these emotions that I don't know what to do with and I don't wanna live that way. So fear became the motivation for me to gain this momentum with courage to keep moving and going forward. So 
I don't know if that helps. I know that fear of the unknown was like this thing that kept me in this pain that I somehow felt I could operate in. And it was such a lie I was telling myself because my pain was not only tearing up my life, it was keeping me from having any kind of life that I really wanted to get out of the bed in the morning and live. It was also affecting all the other people in my life. And my life had shrunk for sure. But even the people that I wasn't in their life anymore, it was affecting. I look at all the people that are in my life today that if I would have kept drinking, I never would have had these relationships. And they're in recovery, they're out of recovery. They're people that I meet in all areas of my life and they would not have had me in their life and I would have not had them in my life except for walking through that fear and getting on the other side. So there is a whole new world and you only go into it piecemeal and it can be as big or as small as I'm comfortable with because recovery is mine and it's pretty much like a canvas and I can paint it however I want and it can be just about this big or it can be this big it can be this bright it can be this bright it's mine. It's mine to do with as I wish. But if I don't get there, if I don't take that step, if I don't walk through that fear, just don't even think about the fear, just take the step. That's the thing for me, even today. I worry about things that haven't happened. I think about outcomes that don't ever transpire. And it is like I cheat myself out of walking through this task or this phone call because of why because of this imaginary outcome in my head. So I have learned the way that I walk through fear is I get out of my head and I get into action. Out of my head and get into action. Out of my head and into action. What is the next step that I need to take today to get my life back, to have the life that I want, to have the relationships that I want? Just by changing with that action. So Kathy McLeish, Alcoholism Unpacked, please subscribe and join me so that we can share a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of understanding about what the disease is doing to us, what it is taking from us and from the people that we love, and take our life back, get our life back, and be able to spread a little bit of the knowledge to just like combat that ignorance that is out there about this disease and how we can change and make life better for us and the people that we care about. Thanks.